Hey guys, Spencer here. Today, we're going to be doing something really exciting, and that's going to be scraping financial data. Now, more often than not, financial data is actually pretty expensive, but for high-level overviews on just getting the fundamental type of data, it is for free. Uh, we'll be comparing two different sites, Yahoo Finance and Financial Modeling Prep, and why I prefer one over the other and why you should be using one over the other. If you're a new viewer to my channel, first of all, welcome. I do financial videos and data related videos such as machine learning, data analytics, data science, even data engineering stuff. And I do a video every week. So if you like what you see, please make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe, turn on a notification bell. That really helps out for this channel. Without further ado, let's get back to the video. So for those who are diving deep into the financial realm, uh, in terms of free resources, instead of using like Icon from Thompson, Thompson Reuters or using Bloomberg terminals, um, because those require a ton of money and a fixed cost. Uh, so for those who don't have a lot of money under their uh, floorboards, so to say, uh, these two websites are incredible in order for us to have access to freely accessible data. Um, but I prefer the financial modeling prep over Exxon, and this video explains why and how we can actually extract such data. So, so one of the companies that we will be utilizing or just taking, taking a look at would just be Exxon, and the ticker is XOM, but for the Exxon company. Uh, as you can see, uh, one of the really cool benefits of both of these websites is that they have financial statements, quarter financials, financial ratios. You can look at your statistics, which is very similar to what they have over here. Um, but I will go more into depth as to why I prefer financial modeling prep over uh, that of the finance, Yahoo, Yahoo Finance. So Yahoo Finance is actually taking away many of the really nice perks and requiring you to pay upfront in order to access more of their data. They're slowly stripping away uh, access from their financial statements, for instance. You have to pay some premium to have more than like four years, whereas over here, the financial modeling prep, you don't have to pay uh, up to five years in terms of five years worth of data or 10 quarter or 20 quarters, so to say. So, uh, and also financial modeling prep has an API that is associated with uh, scraping um, this type of data if we want to access certain financial ratios, for instance. Whereas the Yahoo Finance, uh, it's very messy. Uh, it is, you can use the same technique that I'll be using in this video, uh, just web scraping from a particular website uh, and just like, plugging in the tickers in here and then what type of statement you would want like financials or income balance etc uh, but we would be doing that over here but financial modeling prep they have a really neat api so you can go and get any of these values financial growth um etc we'll be going that we'll go, we will be going more into depth on how to do this uh, but one of the starters you're going to need is you have to create an account, which is totally for free. You can create like a um, like a Gmail or something like that, hook it up with this particular website, and you're gonna need an API key. And um, I guess for privacy reasons, I'm not gonna be showing your API, my API key, but uh, one way to do it is just to look over here, uh, select which plan that you're gonna be a part of, select the plan, and you will be given a a generated API key when you are going to be calculating uh, your stuff. And this is my API key right here, but for obvious reasons, this is gonna be blotted out. Um, but you will be creating a secrets file or a key file in your Python scripts, and you'll just be reading this in, and you will be generating this as a part of your URL. So if you wanna look at Apple, for instance, this is where our API key will exist. And this is where our, all of our data uh, that we can scrape. This is in a dictionary format and we'll just be converting this to a, um, a CSV file or an Excel file in a tabular format. So I went ahead and I generated my key. Make sure your test Jupyter notebook will be uh, in the same directory or um, 
you can just reference wherever your key.txt is going to be at. And for our general example for the ticker, we'll be using Exxon. And we're going to be getting the financial statement, uh, the income statement. So this is how you do it. So we're going to get the values on what we can be plugging in. So we have the dot com, the HTTPS dot com over here, financial modeling prep, API v3 income statement, Exxon, and then limits is equal to whatever 120. This is just the number of um, I guess in terms of like periods, if you're going to do annual, then you're going to be limited up to five because that's five years. But if you don't have, well, if you do have like the premium plan, you can go up to however many uh, statements that they have released. So if a company's a hundred years worth, well, a hundred years old, they can have 100 years worth of financial statements. So that limit would be like 100, which is the maximum value. Uh, and then you can just be sending your API key to something to what the key. Um, but yeah, okay, so we are now going to be using this website, uh, the URL, and we're just going to be plugging in value. Now for testing purposes, we're just going to be using Exxon over here uh, as our target company that we're going to be playing around with. Uh, and we are going to be getting the as many years as possible since we're only limited to five. Uh, our data will only go up to 2015. And now once we get our link from our income statements, we just copy the link over here so that we have a referent to reference to when we are plugging in our inputs to get whatever output that we may want from the API that Financial Modeling Prep has so kindly given us. That's okay. So once we have our link, uh, let us now break this up into components. So the very first thing I like to do is that I just look for consistency. Since in the API for financial modeling prep, I know that this piece right here is always going to be the same thing. And I'll just label this as URL. And once our URL has been completed, uh, we are now going to be plugging in a bunch of points or a bunch of inputs on what we are going to be having over here. And uh, we will just do this via the request package and some string manipulation. So this is what uh, this will look like. So we have R, this is like this says requests. We'll be calling the request package and we name the get function. And the get is essentially just getting information from a given website. That's all it really is. So it's essentially extracting whatever, um, whatever, I guess, um, like data that is stored within that web website and returns it into the request object. So uh, we can be playing around with the uh, string manipulation. And what I mean by that is that we are going to be passing in uh, values. So this first part is URL right here, which we'll be passing in over here, the very first brackets. And that will essentially just pass it in over here using the format function. So uh, this is a really neat uh, string manipulation function if you have a little bit more of a complex um, string so that you can just plug in your inputs and hopefully get whatever outputs that you may so desire. So over here, we're going to have the income statement. So let's just say is is equal to the string income statement over here. Oh, copy and paste this over here. Income statement. And then we're just going to be doing income statement over here which will be passed right here so um it's very like once you understand it it's very understandable on like what to do your next piece is going to be your ticker so since we only want strings we're just going to be referring uh exxon we don't want the list we just want what's inside of the list over here so we call the ticker over here we gonna be doing ticker and let's actually incorporate uh slash over here and then we are yeah, we have a slash and then Apple. And then we make sure we put in the other bracket. Now uh, we can now just put the question mark and then a period is equal to something, which is annual or quarter. Uh, so let's just label this as the period. Period is equal to quarter in this case. Uh, but note that this can also be annual and you're just gonna get the annual statements or the annual um, periods that you're going to get from that. So th in this general test case, we're going to have quarters and let's put quarter or period over here. 
And then once we have our period is equal to your brackets, um, you'd be doing the same thing. You'd just be referring back to your URL up here and you're going back and forth. And then so this is your limit. This is essentially the number of, I guess, periods that are going to come into play. So if you only want like seven records uh, and for seven quarters, your limit is just going to be seven. Uh, since I'm on a free plan, um, I'm only limited to five annual, um, I guess, periods or 10 quarterly or 20 quarterly periods over there. So since I'm doing quarters, going with max, let's get the 20. Um, just get a 20 periods over here. And if you go over, uh, it will still limit you to only that amount, to the maximum amount. Okay. And then the last part is just key. You can be passing that in. And let's put the ampersand here and the API keys equal to uh, your next input. So that is going to be your request. Let's run this. Uh, let's see. One, two. Oh, right here. Okay. So that's supposed to be IS, not just income statement. Is there another parent? No, limit. Oh, okay, just limit. And set this as a variable. Limit is equal to 20. There we go. So once we have our request, make sure it's a 200, which means that we actually have something here. Once we have our response is equal to 200, if it's not 200, then there's something that went wrong with either your link or your inputs or more often than not something wrong with your link or if the website's not letting you actually extract the data but you can easily just look that up um on what type of code you are receiving but in general you always want to see the code 200 which means everything works okay so once we have that let's call our in income statement is equal to our r.json um, because we are actually let's just print this out the r.json so this is what we got. Uh, it returns a list of dictionaries actually, but this is in JSON format. Uh, this is what it looks like. We are in quarters. This goes all the way back to 2019. Oh yeah, okay. Then, uh, I actually learned something new. So there's only five quarters that we can actually reference. So let's change this to annual uh, so that we just get a bigger picture as to what looks, uh, what looks good. So we have 2019, let's go to 2015. Yeah, 2015. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I did not know that, but now, now I do. But now, uh, since we have the r.json, let's convert this to more of a tabular format, like a uh, like a rectangle. And so one of the ways to do that is just use the data frame package or pandas package, and let's convert this over. So it's called uh, pd.dataframe. And then since we know that this, um, actually let's do a type real quick. What is this? So that's a list and this will be a dictionary. So we already know that it's going to be a dictionary, even though we are um, trying, even though we called the JSON function on it, which is interesting. But uh, once we have the r.json over here, let's convert the data frame from the list that we are going to get. What does that look like? There we go. So this is what our data looks like. Uh, let's transpose this since this is financial data and we are going to want to be like that. Sweet. So this is what our income statement is looking like. We have our revenue, we got cost of revenue. Um, and this looks like it's just raw numbers, uh, which is fine. Uh, we can always convert that later. And yeah, this looks good. So we have zero to four. So that's five annual values that we are going to be working with, or we could work with in the future. And we have it all labeled here. So let's actually put shift our very first row to our column. Um, so let's associate this with like D for instance, D is equal to that. And so how you would shift your very first row to your column, this would just be D dot columns. That's equal to D dot iloc at zero. And then we can ignore that very first row since it's already our column. So we should be calling D is equal to D dot iloc uh, one colon run that and let's see what this looks like bam so that's how you do it that is how you extract data and then if you want other resources let's go back here exam and if we want for developers we can go api docs yeah once we have that we could easily just do the exact same thing if we want uh, like a cash flow statement or 
even better. Yeah, cash flow. Yeah, let's do cash flow. Why not? We literally do the exact same thing. Uh, you put your API key, you put in your ticker over here, you can put your limit size and whatever else uh, to get other information. And then you can just run your financial models. So I already went ahead and I just created a real quick, a real quick script. I already have a bunch of functions that reads in uh, various data from the URLs that are already given. Um, I pretty much just copied from the exact same logic that I did earlier. I have a try accept and I just put in a different URL for different values that I so may want. I can get daily prices, enterprise value, I can get key metrics, financial ratios, cash flows, balance sheets, and incomes. So I went ahead and I just got like three of the same sort of companies within the same industry. We have the Exile, we got BP Oil, we got uh, Chevron. And what I'm doing here, I'm just iterating through the tickers using all these functions, as I mentioned earlier, to do whatever you would like. Um, and yeah, let's actually just run this. Just do Python, uh, Python, your financial data scraping, and this should return you the data sets of your choosing. So let us take a look at that. I'll pull that on over and it's under, we have Exxon, we got BP, we got CVX. Bam, so we have all three of these files. Note that they are very similar. Uh, we have essentially all we would like. We can expand this out. So we have symbols. We got the revenue for income. We got our balance sheet stuff. Um, we got everything. We got your cash flows. And note that each website has different values, um, like different ways of calculating certain ratios. For instance, like price to earnings or EBIT or EBITDA, etc. So uh, one of the really neat things about using uh, this particular website, Financial Modeling Prep, is that they actually tell you how they calculated uh, certain metrics. So it's a lot, It's a, it gives you a, like a less strain on how they're calculating that and how they came up to that particular value. We got daily prices over here. Yeah. Okay, and then we have our enterprise value if you want to use that for your fundamental value analysis. I'm glad to see that you made it to the end of this video. It was quite long and arduous, but here we are. So hopefully this video gave you some more insight on how to access free, free data to do whatever you would like related to the financial industry. So if you really liked it, make sure you leave a like, notify yourself by clicking on that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one, thank you for watching.